Well, welcome back to the Survivalist 2008 channel. And we're going to start part two now of the 80 to 6 meter off center fed dipole for SHTF and backpacking. We'll talk a little bit about the manual antenna tuner and then we'll make a contact on one of the ham bands using the off center fed dipole. Then we'll roll the antenna back up on the fishing reel and finalize it uh, with some final comments. So thanks for checking in. Well, I've been tuning around the bands listening for anyone that's calling CQ. CQ is uh, the term that is used by hams when they're looking for other hams to make a random conversation. So they would put their call out and go CQ, CQ, CQ. And I haven't heard anybody, and uh, I'll continue to listen on the band, and we'll try to see if we can get a uh, contact in here on the video. But I wanted to uh, discuss the antenna tuner a little bit more in detail. Now, every antenna basically is cut for one specific frequency, general. Now, this particular antenna, this off-center fed dipole, which is also known as a Wyndham antenna, it has certain properties that make it uh, resonant on a number of, uh, of bands. And uh, what I've done uh, is went through and spotted some of the frequencies where it seems to be resonant on, and I'll include that in this video. Uh, however, what happens if you're not on a frequency that that antenna is specifically tuned for, what you have is you have a mismatch. And what this really does is fool the in, is fool the radio into believing that it has a good match. Now what I mean by that is most modern radios have a built-in circuitry that will cut back on the power output of the radio to keep it from becoming damaged. If it's putting a signal into an antenna that is greatly mismatched. So it's a safeguard. So instead of 50 watts, it may cut back to 3 watts or 5 watts. It may even completely shut down the transmitter to protect this transmitter. So basically, what you've got in, an, in a manual antenna or even an automatic antenna tuner, you've got a box here that is uh, fooling the radio into thinking that it's a 100% perfect match and it allows the radio to put out full power through the matchbox and into the antenna. Now remember, antenna works best when it's tuned to that frequency. So if you've got a mismatch that this is telling the radio that it's fixed, you still may have a mismatch with the antenna. So the antenna might not be 100% efficient, but generally if you're putting out the full amount of power that you want to get to the antenna through this matchbox is really what it is. But people call it it's an antenna tuner, but it's really fooling the radio into thinking that everything is okay, go ahead and put out your full power. It keeps the radio from becoming damaged, and it allows the most power that you can put out to the antenna. And then that antenna will do its best to be as efficient as possible to radiate that signal. So that's basically what an antenna tuner is doing. It's uh, a necessary item on most antennas. Some antennas uh, are wide-banded where you can actually uh, operate on a number of different frequencies without an antenna tuner. Now these all center fed dipoles are designed to have uh, some very low dips in their SWR curve in uh, areas of some of the most popular ham radio bands. But still, uh, with certain variables such as the antenna height above ground, how uh, moist the ground is, uh, how many tree limbs are near the antenna. There's so many variables that it's always best to have that antenna tuned. So I hope that explained it a little. Uh, they do make antenna tuners that are smaller than this, 
I just happen to have this one. This one is probably a good 8 inches wide, and that's the one I'll be using when I go portable. So all of this is a prelude uh, video leading up to our actual uh, trip out into the field to set this entire system up. When I do that, I won't have a power supply. I'll have a 12-volt battery with me. And basically, I'll have the tuner, the radio, a 12-volt battery. I will carry my antenna analyzer, and I'll also carry uh, a solar panel, which I'll also be doing a video on the solar panel and on the batteries to give you a little bit of idea uh, what I'll be carrying uh, portable. So uh, anyway, that's a little bit of information on the antenna tuner, and I'm going to continue to see if I can't find a station to uh, tune in and make contact with. So thanks for watching. I'll be back in just a minute. Kilo Uniform Four Japan Zulu. Kilo Uniform Four Japan Zulu. Uh, it's Kilo Uniform Four Japan Zanzibar. Kilo Uniform Four Japan Zanzibar. The last letter is Zulu. Last letter is Zulu. Kilo Uniform Ford, Japan, Zulu. Zulu. QSL, Joel. QSL, you're a 5 by 9 with QS Baker. 5x9 with QS Baker, and my name is John, Juliet Oscar, Hotel Nancy, over, over. QSL 73, Joel, 73. Okay. There we had a good contact here with uh, Joel. Joel was his name, J-O-E-L. His call is Italy Tango 9, Victor Delta Quebec. He's lo located on an island uh, off the coast of Italy. So uh, I gave him a 5x9, he gave me a 5x5. Five five. That QSB is another one of the Q, sim uh, Q symbols, and that means there's a lot of uh, fluctuation of signals on the band. The uh, signals are up and down, up and down, a lot of uh, fluctuation. So uh, there we go. Uh, I was cheating, though. I was running 100 watts. When I'm portable out of the field, I probably will be running 5 watts, but I uh, wanted to give the smoke test to the antenna, and the smoke test is what it sounds like. Uh, that's what hams uh, call it when they uh, put something online, they're not sure if it's going to work, and if it smokes, it didn't work, and if it didn't smoke, well, it worked. So uh, nothing burn up. I made the contact uh, with a station in Italy. So uh, that's not bad for a little uh, antenna that's up uh, 25 feet. The ends of the, uh, of the antenna may be 7 or 8 feet off the ground at the most. And um, 
basically the wire is a 22 gauge magnet wire and I think I've already shown you some still shots uh, of the close-up of the ballon and all of that. So with that I'm going to go ahead and end this uh, video. I'm not sure it may go into two parts. If not, we'll wrap it up in one part and if it goes into two parts, so be it. But I wanted to go into a little bit of detail about the antenna uh, and basically uh, how the antenna hooks up especially into the antenna tuner, give you some information on that and show you basically the operation of the radio before we actually get it out uh, on, a, on a hiking trip because it's always better to test your equipment before you get it out of the field. So we gave it the smoke test and uh, that about wraps it up. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, take this antenna down and probably take some steel shots of how I'm rolling the antenna back on the fishing reel. So uh, thanks for watching. Appreciate you checking in to the Survivalist 2008 channel today. And we'll catch you on down the lawn. And have a great day. Well, to secure this antenna, it's very easy. Basically, disconnect the elements and lay those on the ground. Get you a short piece of black electrical tape, and as you can see, just tack the end of one of the pieces onto the tape. Then feed the tape into the fishing reel. Secure the end of the tape on the fishing reel, and then just start winding that particular element in. Use your finger to kind of weave the element across from one side to side so it'll go on very evenly. Then you'll do that to the second element. Then basically don't forget to wrap up your mason's twine or whatever cord you decide to use. And uh, then what you've got is a very nice, neat, neat little package here with your fishing reel antenna and uh, you've also got your ballon and your coax and that takes up very little space in your backpack. Now some words of caution. I built this antenna basically for weight considerations. It is very lightweight and as such it's not really very robust and it's not designed to be installed a great deal of times. Now a few things that you can do, you can use larger wire and you can also go with something like a uh, homemade uh, antenna or one that you can buy online that is made out of 18 gauge wire such as the one you see here. I bought this on eBay, it was an excellent price, almost cheaper than I can build it myself and it comes with the ballon so I went ahead and bought it. So that could be an alternate to the extremely lightweight fishing reel antenna, which is only 7.8 ounces. It's not robust. However, this 80 meter dipole is more robust and would stand up to more installations and could be used as a permanent antenna. However, it weighs 2 pounds, 2.6 ounces. So there is your trade-off. Uh, more robust, but it's heavier weight. Well, that wraps it up for this particular series on the off-center fed dipole. Thanks for stopping by the channel and keep your eyes out. The next series uh, of videos will be on the solar power station and the small portable sealed lead acid batteries. Then we'll wrap the series up with an actual trek out into the wilderness to set the whole station up. So thanks for watching.